Hello, my name is Alexa Prun. I'm a student of VU Polytechnic National University. I'm here to present you my project called Permanent Magnet Synchronous Motor Temperature Estimation. On this slide you can see the main sections of presentation. So, let's get started. First of all, let's find out what it is Permanent Magnet Synchronous Motor. Permanent Magnet Synchronous Motor or PMSM is a synchronous electric motor whose inductor consists of permanent magnets. The main difference between PMSM and an induction motor is in the rotor. Studies show that PMSM has an efficiency of approximately 2% more than a highly efficient induction electric motor, provided that the stator has the same design and the same variable frequency drive is used for control. In this case, parent magnet synchronous electric motors in comparison with other electric motors have the best performance. On this slide we can see a schematic representation of PMSM. Now, let's understand the essence of this project. This project is based on the dataset that comprises several sensor data collected from a PMSM deployed on a test bench. The PMSM represents a German OEM's prototype model. Test bench measurement were collected by the LEA department at Payborn University. The main purpose of the dataset recording is to be able to model the stator and rotor temperatures of a PMSM in real time. Due to the intricate structure of an electric attraction drive, direct measurement with thermal sensors is not possible for the rotor temperatures, and even in case of the stator temperatures, sensor outage or even just deterioration can be administered properly without reunion modeling. In addition, precise thermal modeling gets more and more important with the rising levels of functional safety. The main task of the project. The main task in my project is to design a model with appropriate feature engineering that estimates for target temperature in casual manner. Target features Stator yoke temperature, Stator tooth temperature, Stator winding temperature, and parent magnet surface temperature. This project should not be considered as a development of a global PMSM control system for cars or other mechanisms. It is better to consider it as a component of this system which is responsible for predicting the values of stator and rotor temperatures using sensors data from other elements of PMSM because receiving data from the stator or rotor using thermal sensors is unreliable and commercially unprofitable. Uh, here we can see an activity diagram that describes the working process of the system component responsible for the machine learning model. And we can see a sequence diagram describing the interaction between the control system and this component. Ok, now let's talk about the dataset I mentioned before. Dataset features part 1. Ambient. Ambient temperature is measured by a thermal sensor located closely to the starter. Coolant. Coolant temperature. UD. Voltage D component. UQ. Voltage Q component. Motor speed. Motor speed. Torque. Torque induced by current. ID. Current D component. IQ. Current Q component. Dataset features part 2. Uh, PM. Permanent magnet surface temperature representing the rotor temperature. Stator yoke, stator yoke temperature measured with a thermal sensor. Stator tooth, stator tooth temperature measured with a thermal sensor. Stator wind, stator winding temperature measure, measured with a thermal sensor. Profile ID. Each measurement session has a unique ID. Some additional information about the dataset. Each row represents one snapshot of sensor that at a certain time step. All recordings are sampled at 2 GHz, one row per 0.5 seconds. The dataset consists of multiple measurement sessions, which can be distinguished from each other by a column profile ID. A measurement session can be between 1 and 6 hours long, amount of sessions 52. Most drying in cycles do not random bulks in the speed torque plan in order to imitate real world driving cycles to a more accurate decrease in constant excitations and ram ups and down swoop. Machine learning algorithm used in this project. Random forest regression. Random forest is an ansible technique capable of performing both regression and classification tasks with the use of multiple decision trees and a technique called bootstrap aggregation, commonly known as BEC. The first algorithm for random decision forest was created by Team Kam Ho using the random subspace method, which in Ho's formulation 
is a way to implement the stochastic discrimination. Uh, on this slide uh, we can see the structure of the random forest method. Pros and cons of random forest. Pros. The predictive performance can compete with the best supervised learning algorithms. They provide a reliable feature importance estimate. They offer efficient estimates of the test error without incurring the cost of repeated model training associated with cross-validation. Cons. An ensemble model is inherently less interpre interpretable than an individual decision tree. Training a large number of deep trees can have high computational costs, but can be parallelized and use a lot of memory. Predictions are slower, which may create challenges for applications. Programming tools were used to implement this project. Python. Python is an interpreted high-level general purpose programming language created by Guido Van Rossum and first released in 1999. Python's design philosophy emphasizes code readability with its notable use of significant white space. Its language constructs an object-oriented approach aimed to help programmers write clear, logical code for the small and large-scale project. Benefits that made Python the best fit for machine learning and AE-based projects include simplicity and consistency, access to great libraries and frameworks for AE and machine learning, flexibility, platform independence and a wide community. These add to the overall popularity of the language. NumPy NumPy is a library for the Python programming language, adding support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices, along with a large collection of higher level mathematical functions to operate on these arrays. NumPy is open source software and has many contributors. Pandas In computer programming, Pandas is a software library right for the Python programming language for data manipulation and analysis. Pandas is mainly used for machine learning in form of data frames. Pandas allow importing data of various file formats such as CSV, Excel, etc. Pandas allow various data manipulation operations such as group by, join, merge, meld, concatenation, as well as data cleaning features such as filling, replacing or inputting null values. Skitlearn Skitlearn, also known as Sklearn, is a free software machine learning uh, library for the Python programming language. It features various classification, regression and clustering algorithms including support vector machines, random forest, gradient boosting, k-means and db-scan, and is designed to interoperate with the Python numerical and scientific libraries NumPy and SciPy. Matplotlib Matplotlib is a plotting library for the Python programming language and its numerical mathematics extensions NumPy. It provides an object-oriented AP for embedding plots into applications using general-purpose GUI toolkits like Tkinter, VX Python, Qt, or GTK+. Matplotlib was originally written by John D. Hunter, since then it has an active development community and is distributed under a BSD-style license. Ok, now let's talk about project realization. Exploring the data. First of all, making data exploring and preparation, loading data into Pandas data frame, checking data set for NAND values, plotting the correlation line and block box plots of all features. First 10 rows, here you can see the first 10 rows of the data set. Uh, here we can see the box plots of all features. And correlation matrix that show us correlation between various dataset attributes. After exploring the dataset, following observa observations can be made. The various test runs, 52 in total, are labeled by the profile LD. The indexes for these test runs, however, are not incremental. When we look at the statistical overview of the dataset and the histograms, it seems the dataset already has had some kind of normalization. The ambient temperature is measured by a thermal sensor located close to the stator. We can therefore assume that this will have an impact of, on the self-cooling capacity of the motor. Higher ambient temperature will probably result in a higher temperature for both the motors, stators and rotors. 
Correlation matrix shows that there is a significant correlation between the three different starter temperatures. Determination of the predicted sim. Significant correlation between the starter wind in yolk and two temperature are already discovered. This of course due to the fact that the starter winding is wound around the starter tooth, which is his turn is connected to the starter yolk. To get a better insight into the relationship between the three features plotting the wave feature values for various randomly selected test runs. Uh, on this slide you can see the test run profile ID. Uh, on the next slide you can see test runs 81 and 69. The line plots confirm that all three temperatures follow the same trend. The starter winding temperature shows the biggest variation followed by the starter tooth and starter york temperature. This is especially noticeable when there is a lot of variation in the starter winding temperature. The starter tooth and yolk temperatures follow a smoother path than the temperature record on the starter wind. In other words, the heat dissipated by the starter windings take some time to heat up the stator tooth and yolk due to the thermal inertia of both starter parts. A second observation that can be made on the various line plots is that sometimes the starter yolk temperature has a higher value than the starter winding because of the presumed normalization mentioned here. We cannot determine whether this is due to the normalization method use or whether those values actually present higher temperatures measured on the starter yolk. On this slide we can see plots of starter winding temperature in comparison to torque and motor speed for test run 6. In the second part of the above test run uh, there seems to be a relation between the starter temperatures torque and motor speed. When the torque and or, or motor speed is increased the temperature rises and vice versa. However looking at the first part of the plot this is not always the case. Even with constant torque and motor speed, the starter winding temperature shows several sudden changes in temperature. In other words, there seem to be one or more other variables which have an impact of the starter temperature. Predicting the starter winding temperature Because measuring the torque, rotor and starter temperatures of all electromotor is not reliable nor economically feasible in commercial applications, Prediction of the starter temperature will be performed by using the other available features in the dataset. Start with removing the torque, rotor and starter temperatures from dataset and use the starter winding temperature as target value. Once this is done, try random forest regression to predict the correct starter winding temperature as an output value for the input variables given. Model trading and prediction of starter temperature I will demonstrate in the real-time program. Uh, here we start in random forest model training program. Ok, model start to fitting. We need to wait some time until model will fit. After the model is loaded, enter. After model fitted, we can see how much time it takes. Uh, the how much time it takes, uh, mean squared error and mean absolute error, uh, and uh, we can see that model is successfully set. Okay, now I'm running the main prognosis program. And wait until model is loading. Okay, model load. After the model is loaded, uh, I need to enter the value of the test cycle. Okay. Uh, the top graph uh, shows the true stator winding temperature in comparison to the values predicted by the random forest regress. As we can see, the random forest regressor seems to be able to capture the global trends in the stator winding value, but still there is a lot of noise in the predicted values. Especially when the true signal shows a lot of variation. To filter out the noise generated by the model, applying a moving average function which we can see on the bottom graph.
Combined with the moving average function, the random forest regressor gives us a fairly accurate prediction of the starter winding temperature. The moving average has reduced the noise in the predicted output values and has had a positive impact on the MSA for this specific test run. MSA we can see uh, here. Uh, it's MSA without smoothing, without uh, moving average, and this is MSA, mean squared error, with smoothing average. With smoothing average. Okay, now let's uh, watch another random uh, test run. Uh, let's choose 11. Here we can see the 11 test run. Now let's choose. 56 or 57 uh, we can see the 57 test run and for the end let's choose 81 here we can see 81 test run with, without music and with music here we can see uh, a different MSEAs for these test runs Let's stop the program and back to our presentation. Let's conclude all that uh, we talk about in our presentation. After analyzing the obtained forecasting results, we can conclude that the main tasks of this project are achieved and the train model can be used as a component of more complex systems for accurate estimation and prediction of stutter and rotor temperatures of a permanent magnet synchronous model. Being able to have strong estimators for the rotor temperature helps the automotive industry to manufacture motors with less material and enables control strategies to utilize the motor to its maximum capability. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm glad that I can do this project. Goodbye.